Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want my mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered. I got my B-I-B-L-E and I keeps it on my side. I got my B-I-B-L-E and I keeps it in my ride. I got my B-I-B-L-E and I keeps it on the time. Teach it on the blocks. We be on the most high's grind. I got my B-I-B-L-E and I keeps it on my side. I got my B-I-B-L-E and I keeps it in my ride. I got my B-I-B-L-E and I keeps it on the time. Teach it on the block. We be on the Oh, I don't know where some of you all are going. But you shouldn't be there. You should be gathered together with your people, keeping the commandments of God. That's, That's right. Having faith in Christ. Israel, as Israelites. Right. right. Read. Exodus 28. Exodus 20 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day. So God is telling the Israelites, you blacks and Hispanics and native Indians, according to the Bible, to remember his holy day, the Sabbath day. Read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. To keep it holy, which we just read in Romans 7 and 12, is by keeping the commandments, by keeping the law. Now give me Luke 4 and 16. Because if you call yourself a Christian, you should be doing what Christ did. Because Christian means to be a follower of Christ. That's right. So we read in Exodus where it said, remember the Sabbath day. So let's see if Christ kept the Sabbath day or if he praised God on the first day of the week. Read. Luke 4 and 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. So we speak about Christ who went back to where he was born in Nazareth. Read. And as his custom. His custom was something that he did on the regular. Read what he did. And as his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He went where? To the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So Christ kept the Sabbath. Christ did not go and worship God on the first day of the week on Sunday. He was doing it on what you now know as Saturday. Right. That's right. So if you say you love God, you love Christ, you should be doing exactly what he did. Give me that in uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. Because if you say you love him, you got to be doing what he did. Because he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right. And Christ kept the Sabbath. Read. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 4. Uh -huh. He that saith, I know him. So if you say you got a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that means you know him. Yeah, I know Christ. I know what he did on the Sabbath day. He kept it holy. That means right. you know him. Read it again. He that saith, I know him. Uh -huh. And keepeth not his commandments. Hold on. So if you say you know Christ, and don't do what he said or do what he did, read. And keep it not his commandments is a liar. The Bible says you a liar. Right. That's right. Not us. The Bible said that. And why do we bring that out? So you can know the truth and repent from it. It's never too late to repent and turn back to Christ because you are his chosen people according to the Bible. That's, that's right. You are known as the Israelites in the Bible and God gave you a responsibility. Give me Isaiah 43 and 21. I'm gonna show you what your responsibility is as a so-called black woman, black man here in America. Read that. 43 and 20. Uh -huh. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21. Uh huh. This people. Hold on. God is being specific. He said, this people shall do what? I have formed for myself. God made you for himself for a specific reason. Read. Read. They shall show forth my praise. You are supposed to show forth your praise unto God. And how do you do that? By keeping his commandments. That's right. So when you right. walk down the street, somebody will see you and say, that's an Israelite. That's the chosen people of God. Right. She's from the tribe of Judah. If you are so-called black, you are from the tribe of Judah. Right. That's your God-given name. African-American is a slave name. It's Black History Month. And this is Black History Month. 
All you go to hear is about uh, how the uh, slaves came over here and shipped, and that's it. But they are not going to teach you who you are according to God. Right. 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 Read that again. This is what God said about you. Isaiah 43 verse 21. Uh-huh. This people. You blacks and Hispanics and native Indians known as the Israelites in the Bible. Read. Have I formed for myself. God created you. Created you for him. You are God's chosen people. He loves you and nobody else. Us, right. Read. They shall show forth my praise. You show forth your praise to God by keeping his commandments. Give me a commandment. We got to go back to it. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Listen up, sisters. We're going to show you how you show forth your praise to God. We're going to show you, man, how you show forth your praise to God. Read. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. To make it easy, you should not be wearing pants. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Hey, sister, did you hear that scripture right there? Did you hear it? Come over so you can hear it. Pray your prayer too. Come on. Twenty-two verse five. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear which pertaineth unto a man. Come on, we your brothers. We out here for your good. We not out here to hurt you. Come over here, hear the words of God. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So man should be wearing dresses like you see these rappers do. Like Kanye and Pete Diddy and Young Thug and uh, ASAP Rocky. Two chains. Two chains. Two chains wearing dresses. That's not according to God. That's out of order. Read it from the top again. Listen, sisters, because I'm over here teaching. According to the Bible, back to the I'm the chosen people of God. Known as the Israelites in the Bible. Because you can't find the word African American in the Bible, right? I'm going to show you. You get it? You can't find that name in the Bible. So where did it come from? It was given to our forefathers in slavery. And we have been going along with the motions for, uh, for 400 years. The Hispanics are not known as Hispanics. They are known as the tribe of Ephraim. If you are from Puerto Rico. If you are Cuban, you are known as Manasseh. Where are y'all fathers from? Where are y'all from? I'm just saying. So you would be from the tribe of Judah. What about your sister? From the tribe of Judah. Give me help with something. Let's see it too. How about you, sister? You see the same thing. Same thing? So according to the Bible, God called you <laughs> Judah. So whenever you see the name Judah in the Bible, he's talking about you black people. You've never known that because Christianity don't teach you that. They say we all one in Christ Jesus. No, not according to the Bible. All throughout the Bible you read Israel, Judah, Israelites, all throughout the Bible. Why is that? God's speaking to a specific people, but they don't know who they are. I'm going to show you who else came from the tribe of Judah. Read that. Hebrews 7 and verse 14. Read it good. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Who's That's our Lord right. Say, right. Jesus Christ, he came out of the tribe of what? Sprang out of Judah. He came out of the tribe of Judah. So if you are from the tribe of Judah, what you think Christ looked like? He looked like a black man. So why they teach this in Christianity? Because I can go on Google right now and type in Christ what's gonna pop up. That right there or this? So they've been teaching you lies your whole life. Say it again. They've been teaching you lies your entire life. Now, what you should say to me is, prove it out of the Bible. Because you may not have read it. Do you all want me to prove it out of the Bible? Bring it up. Bring it up. Well, I don't know about y'all. Do y'all look like your mothers and your fathers? Y'all was with, right? Yeah. So don't you think Christ was with his father? Yes. Let's see what he looks like. Let's see what God The book of Daniel, chapter 7, 
and verse 9. Read. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Uh-huh. And the ancient of days did sit. So Daniel, your forefather, who was also from the tribe of Judah, said, I beheld, I was looking, and I seen where the thrones, meaning all the kingdoms of the earth, were cast down. And the Most High God was sitting down. If you sitting down, that means you have a what? A body. You got legs, you got a butt, you got a back, you got shoulders, you got arms. So they're teaching you that God is a spirit, and he's a flawed stone to your life. God is a form, a body, just like we do. We got a spirit inside of our body that is formed to our body. Read on. The Ancient of Days did sit. And the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow. So the garment that Christ had on was, uh, God had on was pure white, cause there was no sin in him. There is no sin with God. Read. And the hair. Hold on, the what? And the hair. And the hair. Of his head, like the pure wool. Hold on, what did God's hair look like? Like the pure wool. Hold on now, God got Like we read in uh, Isaiah 43 and 21. Right. So when you perm your hair and color your hair blonde, you're not showing forth the praise of God. Now let's see what his son looked like, because God got woolly hair. Remember that now. So let's see what his son looked like. Revelation chapter 1. Get straight to it, verse 14. And verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it said Christ got white and woolly hair. How come they keep preaching this to us? You know why? Because they don't want you to know who you are. Because if you forever stay in a lost state of confusion, you will always remain in sin. And as long as you are in sin, God is angry with you. Why? Because he is bringing his prophets out here on the streets to teach you who you are. Right. Just like he did Isaiah. He sent him to the people. He sent Jeremiah to the people. He sent Ezekiel to the people, telling them to repent, return back to me. Read on, let's finish that out. White like wool, as uh -huh. white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So you said, I seen you sisters pointing about his eyes are red. The reason why his eyes is red is because Christ drank wine. He wasn't a drunk, but he was drinking wine. And when us so-called black people, who are known as Judah in the Bible, drink wine or liquor, our eyes turn red when we drink. That's the same way with Christ. His eyes turn red because he used to drink wine in moderation. He wasn't a drunk. Read on. And his feet. Hold on, his feet. Are y'all feet the same color as your bodies? It's the same color as your hands, right? And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass, sister? Brown. So John said, I looked at Christ's feet and they look like brass. They look brown. And you just said that if I see somebody's feet, I can pretty much tell what color the rest of their body is, right? right? Read, let's see how brown Christ was. Fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. If you take anything and put it in the furnace and it's brown already, is it gonna get lighter or darker? Did Christ look like that? Or did he look like this? He looked like this, with woolly hair. That's right. Christ didn't perm his hair. He wasn't trying to look like nobody else. Christ wasn't trying to fit in. You know why? Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Bring it Christ was from the tribe of Judah, where you so-called blacks are from. Your name, yeah, it's dark skin, you're right. Now, Christ was according to the Bible, in the Bible, was from the tribe of Judah, the same right. tribe you from. That's your God-given name. He wouldn't try to fit in like nobody else, because he understood this. Read. Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. And I want you, sister, to take this and go home with it and start applying it to your life. Start looking up that flyer and searching out this information so you can begin to change your life for the better too. All right, read. For thou art an holy 
people. So God says that when you blacks and Hispanics and native Indians keep my commandments, What's that, sister? She needs some more. Okay. Some more. When you more. keep his commandments, God says you are a holy people. Now, we know we are holy people today in uh, pretense because who goes to church more than black people? Who prays, say they praise God more than so-called blacks and Hispanic people? Nobody. We the ones shouting up and down, jumping, running up and down in the aisles. Why? Because in our spirit, we know we're supposed to be doing something, but we don't know where that truth is. The truth is right here today. Read on. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. So God said, I chose you above all other people. You don't have to try to fit in with everybody else. We know that the images you see on TV is women with long hair from the Chinese shops spending $300 per year, put weave in their hair to try to fit in with everybody else. We just ran from Christ and God got holy hair. They weren't trying to fit in with nobody. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. He chose you. Read. To be a special people unto himself. When, when you are special, that means that you separate from everybody else. When you are, uh, I don't know what y'all play. If you ever play hopscotch or hide and go seek or basketball, when somebody is choosing, you be like, yeah, yeah, they chose me. Yeah, he picked me first. Yeah, he picked me over you. Why? Because he felt that you were special, you could help him win. I'm just putting it in a worldly term so you can understand. So God said, I chose you above all people. You are special to me. Although I created everybody else, I chose you. Read on. To be a special people unto himself, above all people. Oh, equal. Above all people. Hello. Above all people. People! So God says you are above the white man. You are above the Asian man. You are above the Arab man. You are above the East Indian. Yeah, we know they on top right now. Why? Because we living in sin. We are committing sin on a daily basis. We are going to the mall on God's Sabbath day. We are out in the clubs on Friday nights. We're not supposed to be there as Israelites. We're supposed to show forth God's praise. When people see us, they're supposed to say, those are the chosen people of God. That's right. Not that them is niggas. Oh, she's a hoe. Oh, dang, her booty's big. Oh, she's a, a video vixen. Oh, he's a basketball player. Dang, he can run fast. They're not supposed to say that when they see us. They're supposed to say those are God's chosen people. Above all people. Read on. Right. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So God says that you can go from north, south, east, and west. You ain't gonna find nobody more special and above my people. You, the Israelites, your name is Judah in the Bible. I keep saying that so you can remember that. You are Jews, so when you read in the New Testament, and Christ was sent to the Jews, and he was preaching to the Jews, he was talking to other black people in Israel. They make you think. You know what they do? What's the most famous scripture in Christianity that even somebody who just chopped somebody's head off you quote? A very famous scripture in Christianity. I'll give you a hint. The first name of it is John. John 3.16. Everybody knows that scripture. And they use that in Christianity to make you think that he's talking about everybody when he's speaking that. No, he's not. I'm gonna show you who the world in God's eyes. Now look, we just show, I just showed you in Deuteronomy where it said, I chose you Israelites above all people, right? So I'm gonna show you where God says, this is my world. Like if you got a, I'm saying, uh, your husband. If you got a husband, you say, he's my world. That means you only got eyes for him. You ain't looking at nobody else, right? right. Give me Isaiah 45, 45 17. 17. The book. So I'm gonna show you who the world is. In John 3, 16, where it says, for God so loved the world, Let's see the world that God loves. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. Uh-huh. But Israel. Who? But Israel. You blacks and Hispanics and native Indians, but Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Israel shall be saved in the Lord with everlasting salvation. Uh-huh. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So what did he just call the Israelites? A what without end? Read it again, brother sister. That's why we are here, so you can get to understand. Read it again. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded.
wounded. You shouldn't be ashamed that you God chose the people. Right. You shouldn't be confused about that when you take the Bible from now on. You should not be ashamed or confounded. What? World or what? without end. A world without end. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world of who? He loved the world of who though? What was the name he just said? Isaiah 45, 17. Read it again from the top. I gotta make sure you understand this. Because Christianity don't teach you this. They get you read John 3.16, they close the book, and then you start saying it, and pass the connection plate, and you go home, and then they say, what was Sabbath? What was the church service about? I know the whole choir sure was good. I know, because we was all in Christianity. We were searching for God just like you are. Until we heard the truth one day. It's like, that makes a whole lot of sense. That's what I've been looking for right there. Read. Isaiah 45, verse 17. But... Israel! But who? Israel. Alright, go back to John chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. The world of who? Israel. The world of Israel. That he did what? That he gave his only begotten son. Uh huh. That whosoever. He sent his only begotten son to the world of who? The world of Israel. Now, I might be making that up. Let's see if Christ said that. Matthew 15, 24. Y'all think Christ said that? Or did Christ say, I came for everybody? Oh, no, we're going to see. We're going to see if Christ said he came for somebody in specific or if he came to save the whole world like they teach you in Christianity. Remember, they use John 3, 16 to say God loves everybody. But we just showed you the world, according to God, is Israel. Let's see what Christ says. Read. Matthew 15, verse 24. Uh -huh. But Hold on, hold on. Let him get it. Cause we want you to see this out of the Bible yourself. He's gonna show it to you, so all y'all can see it. Go ahead, read. Matthew 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's right. The lost sheep of who? Of the house of Israel. Who did Christ come for? Israel. He didn't come for the whole world. Those 12 tribes that were scattered throughout the world in slavery. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 68. I'm going to show you that in the Bible. Christ said, God, look, we read in John 3, 16, right? That Christ said, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Christ said, I just came for the house of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel that were scattered throughout the world. And I said in slavery. So let's see if that's in the Bible that we can read where black people went into slavery on ships in the Bible. Let's see if that's in there. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. Verse 68, make sure they got it. Verse 68, it's in the front of the book. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. We show you this so you can understand who you are. And once you understand who you are, then you can begin keeping the commandments of God because you know that they were given to you and not everybody else. Thus, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. How did the so-called black man and black woman get to America? We got her on ships. You read this in the Bible. In the Bible. That was given to the Israelites. Right. This wasn't given to African Americans. This wasn't given to the so-called white man. This wasn't given to the Arab. He said, this is given to the house of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, which you are, you all went into slavery on ship. All of us did. All of our foreparents went to uh, into slavery on ship. Now read that again. It's going, to, it's going to get more details for you. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So God said you can see your whole again. What's the whole Israel, that's right. right. Our homeland is Israel, it's not Africa. We ran out of Israel into Africa, running from white people trying to kill us, running from the Romans. We ran to, we ran amongst other black people so we could fit in. If you're in trouble, you don't run amongst white people when other white people's looking for you. You're gonna be like, hey, give me that one dark skinned person right there. I'm looking for them. So the Israelites, who are dark skinned people, ran amongst other dark skinned people. We're not Africans, but we ran amongst them to fit in. So those white people looking for us, 
wouldn't know. So they they be like, blend, blend blend we blend it in. in. They wouldn't know who's who. But we still had to pay for our sins. And God sent the white man that was in America to the other side of the earth to pick us up on ships and bring us here for our sins. Read on. And there ye shall be sold. And in that place, you shall be what? Sold unto your enemies. Was we sold as a people? Right. Young sisters too getting killed. Our young sisters. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King's dream has failed. Why? Because he didn't teach you you was the Israelites right. according to the Bible. That's right. right. That you are in getting all these curses placed on you because you're in the midst of sin. So we have to repent as a people. The word Israel means that you are a prince or a princess of God with power. So that's what the name 2832, that's what the name Israel means. And he placed that name on us above all people. That means that we are his chosen people. Our forefather's name was Jacob. And then he changed his name into Israel. And Israel had 12 sons. And it means that these are the princes and the daughters of God. Royalty. Royalty is what it means. Give me that in Genesis 28, 32. Okay. Genesis 32, 32 verse 28. and verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. He's speaking to our forefather Jacob. That's not going to be your name no more. Read. But Israel. But what? But Israel. Read. For as a prince hast thou power with God. He said, you have power with me. Right. If you keep my commandments. And that's what all of us are looking for. For blessings to be uh, saved from our enemies in this captivity. That we can make it, that we can survive. But we gotta be doing something. God just wants to see that's what we do with being in the midst of wickedness. Now I'm gonna give you a commandment that you may not know. Give me the Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The book of Deuteronomy. Because you may not have heard it earlier, but now that you know that the Israelites went on uh, in slavery on ships, our name in the Bible is called Judah. The commandments was given to us. God got woolly hair just like us and Christ. I'm an Israelite according to the Bible. So that means I got to be doing something. Now here's the first thing that you got to do. And it's very basic. It's not hard. Read. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the woman should be wearing what? Have y'all familiar with any type of um, movies where they show kings and queens? Have you ever seen them in pants? No. no. Why is that? Because they women and men. They women. Royalty. Royalty. Because if oh, you were a person, Lord. Yes, a certain way. Yeah. What we're trying to, what the most have is, is showing you that y'all are royalty. The reason why you don't know is because you don't know who you are. When you know who you are, it comes with customs, ways, all that. They use the most basic thing you go to the bathroom. Ain't no confusion in this. Because you identify who's a man, who's a woman. That's, that's the sense we gotta bring back to our people. We, we've been destroyed so long, lied to for so long. We don't know the basic foundations of what a man look like, what a woman look like. Our sisters are wearing pants today because they don't know better. And now what a, what a boy starts starting to wear? Dresses. 
It's only supposed to be wearing dresses. Israelite woman, which you are. The chosen people of God. Your name in the Bible is called Judah once again. I'm going to show you how beautiful our foremothers used to dress like Sarah. Read that. Ezekiel 16 verse 13. Thus was thou decked with gold. So, so God is saying that the women, when they used to wear their dresses, when we was in our right mind, when we knew that we was Israelites, Bring it out. they Bring were it out. decked out with gold. Right, right. Like the captain just said, we royalty in the eyes of God. But we have fallen to a lower state where we want to be video vixens. We want to be Nicki Minaj. We want to be like, we want to be like white Jesus, which you can't find in the Bible. That was made up to keep you in a state of sin. Read that again. Thus was thou decked with gold uh -huh. and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen. So God said you had on the best clothes. You had on silk. Read on. Linen and silk and broidered work. So it was it was hand sewn. It wasn't just no uh no stamped on uh clothes and then you send it out there as $7.99 at Ross. It wasn't that kind of clothes. This was special. It had to be handmade. Read. Thou didn't eat of fine flour uh -huh. and honey and oil. That means that we wasn't walking around eating pork chops. We weren't eating crab. We weren't eating lobster and shrimp because that is sin according to the Bible. We're not supposed to be eating that as Israelites. That's found in Leviticus chapter 11. Our, our uh, dietary code. Read on. And thou was exceeding beautiful. Our women were what? Exceeding beautiful. You are exceeding beautiful. Right. You don't have to do that. God says, when you dress the way I told you to dress, you are exceedingly beautiful. And the only person's opinion that matters is God. Right. Read. And thou did prosper into a kingdom. Uh-huh. And thou renowned went forth. Hold on. Thy renown. Thy renown means thy fame. So other people, other nations was looking at you, how you dressed. It was like, dang, that's nice. Bring it out. Don't they do that nowadays? Whenever we turn our head backwards, everybody else turns their head backwards. Why do you think the rest of the world is sagging their pants? Because the black men won't wear sagging their pants. They look just like us, but they try to be just like them. That's confused, that's mad, that's crazy. But we're going to give you your right mind today. You're going to leave here today knowing that you are Israelites according to the Bible. That's from right. the tribe of Judah. Read on. And thy renown went forth among the heathen uh -huh. for thy beauty. For thy beauty. You were so decked out in gold and your uh, it was such fine linen. They envied you. They wanted to be just like you. Just like today. Just like today. And that's why the captain brought out that when you see those uh, Queen of England, those movies, they dressed up in royalty and they got those dresses. They didn't come up with that. They got that from our foremothers and our forefathers. Why? Because they saw us and then they took our Bible from us mm -hmm. and then said we couldn't learn how to read in slavery. And then they started dressing like us to where I tell you women shouldn't be wearing pants. That is like, huh? What? I ain't never heard that because you've never heard it in Christianity. They won't teach you that. You've never heard that in Seven Day Adventist because it's not in the Bible. Read on. Where you at? Deuteronomy 22 and 5 again? Read it. Yeah. No, no. Run. Give me Matthew 12, 31. Because this is what we got to do. Now, according to the Bible, women in pants is sin. So right now, sisters, you in the midst of sin. But we didn't know that when we was in the world either, when we had our pants sagging, mm -hmm. when we was going to the tattoo, uh, the tattoo store getting tattoos. We mm -hmm. didn't know that. We was eating pork chops, thanking God for pork chops. We didn't know we was in the midst of sin either until the law came out and then we changed. But I'm going to show you what Christ said. Read that. Matthew 12 and verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you. This is Jesus speaking to the Jews in Jerusalem. We in the book of Matthew. Read. All men of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven. So you can't be forgiven of your sins. But you got to do something. You got to change. You got to repent from your sins. Give me that Psalms 32 and 5. Yeah. You got to repent from your sins. Not as African Americans. Not as black people, because God don't hear their prayers. 
hears the prayers of the Israelites because they are his chosen people. Now we are those people, but you gotta remember that you Israel and acknowledge that you God. Let's see what King David says. Mm -hmm. Psalm 32 and verse five. I acknowledge, I acknowledge my sin. So King David said, I acknowledge my sin. Whenever King David came in, he said, I acknowledge my sin. That means he made it known to God. Lord, forgive me for what I was doing. I didn't know it was wrong. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to be wearing pants. If you're a black man, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to be sagging my pants and getting tattoos or cutting off my beard. Read. I acknowledge my sin unto thee uh -huh. and mine iniquity have I not hid. So he didn't hide nothing from God. He bared his soul. He got down on his knees and he, and he opened his hands and lifted them up to heaven and said, God, forgive me for the sin that I was in. I'll change. I'll start buying dresses. I'll, every time I get paid, I'll go buy a dress and I'll throw away these pants until I become the beauty that you want me to be. I become that envy of the other nations that you want me to be. Right, that's right. And that's what God wants us to return back to. Give me that Jeremiah 3.15. This be the last scripture. I think we gotta go, right? Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 3.15. I'm gonna show you what God is telling you right now like he told our forefathers back in the past. The same thing's going on over and over again. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge. So when you repent and understand that you're an Israelite, he said, I'm going to give you pastors according to my heart. They're going to teach you knowledge. The knowledge is the commandments that we lack. We know how to play basketball. We know how to run fast. We run the basketball industry, the football industry. We know how to rap. We got that kind of knowledge, but we don't have the knowledge of God. We don't have the knowledge that we Israelites, that we have to keep his commandments 17. and keep the faith in his son. Read. Go ahead, 16. Uh, Finish 15. Jeremiah 3, 15. Jeremiah 3, verse 15. I will give you pastors according to mine heart, uh -huh. which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Knowledge of what you need to do to get right with God and Christ. And that's what we're doing right now. Read. And, and it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more. Uh -huh. the, uh, three. That's three. All right, go ahead. Where's that proclaim? Oh, 14. 14. 14. Jeremiah 3 and verse 14. Give me 13. Jeremiah 3 and 13. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. So God is telling the Israelites again, just acknowledge that you're wrong. I didn't know. Our people got a hard time of admitting that they're wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. They will make all the excuses in the world. Got so much pride on them. Oh, God is saying, just admit you didn't know. I'll forgive you. And then start doing what I told you to do. Don't acknowledge your iniquity and then go back and do it again. Because then, what's the point in the, uh, uh, repenting? What's the point in asking for forgiveness if you're going to do it again? Read. Acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God. So admit that you was in sin. Admit that you didn't know. Read. And has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. When it means scatter thy ways to every stranger, that means you went in Christianity, you tried to be Buddhist, you tried to be Seventh-day Adventist, you was apostolic, Islam. you've tried Islam, you've tried every religion on the earth, but you've never tried to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of God. Because in those religions, they don't teach them. Because God never gave the Israelites religion. He gave you laws to keep, to govern your life how to treat each other, how to dress, how to eat. Read. And ye have not obeyed my voice, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Verse 16. Verse, it's gonna pass. verse 16. And it shall come to pass. 15. Verse 14. 14, 14. Verse four, Jeremiah 3 and verse 14. Turn, O backsliding children. So God is speaking to his children, the children of Israel. He said, turn, turn from your wicked ways. Turn from what you thought was right. You may not, like I said, you may not have knew it was wrong to wear pants. He said, turn from that. Turn from uh, committing sin. Turn from having boyfriends. Because there ain't no boyfriends in the Bible. There's only husbands, wives, brothers, and sisters, daughters, sons. Read. 
Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, uh -huh. for I am married unto you, uh -huh. and I will take you for a one, for one. one, and I will take you one of a city uh -huh. and two of a family. Read. And I will bring you to Zion. He's gonna bring us where? Zion. To Zion. He ain't taking us back to Africa. We're going back to Jerusalem. Right. Those right. white people are in our land right now claiming to be us. Why? Because we don't know that we the Israelites. We keep saying we African Americans. And they keep on living up our name, eating up off our name. All the world keeps money on our name. But one day God's gonna turn us, take us back to our homeland. That's right. But we gotta repent and turn back to him. Now give me that in Judah chapter 5, verse 17. I'm gonna show you why the nations don't teach you this. Judas I'm gonna chapter show you why Christianity won't teach you this. Judas chapter five, verse 17. Uh -huh. And was they sin not before their uh -huh. God. Let them, let them get that. Now we reading one of your foremothers named Judah. 17. 17. One of your foremothers named Judah. She was righteous, keeping the commandments of God, wearing beautiful dresses. Read that. Judas 5, verse 17. And was they sin not before their God. We wasn't in the midst of sin. But we was keeping the commandments of God. On Amazon. Amazon, right. Read. Sin not before their God. We wasn't in the midst of sin. Read. They prospered. We what? They prospered. We prospered. We weren't living in the ghettos. We weren't sitting in the slavery on ships. We didn't have baby mamas and baby daddies. We wasn't poor, struggling week to week, month to month, trying to find a job. Working at Quiznos for uh, 12 hours a day for $8. Read. Because the God that hated iniquity. God hates what? Hated iniquity. Iniquity is sin. God hates sin. You know that Christian phrase where it says, uh, God loves the sinner. God hates 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 the sinner. No. God hates iniquity. He hates it all. Read. God that hated iniquity was with them. Uh huh. But when they departed, when they departed, when they stopped keeping the commandments of God, read. From the way which he appointed them. Uh huh. They were destroyed. We was what? They were destroyed. Look around you, sisters. We in the midst of sin. We got trash in our communities right here. If you go to, what's that rich neighborhood out here? Windermere. Windermere. It's a pure rich neighborhood. You won't see this out there. Baldwin Park, you'll see manicured lawns. When we turn away from God and we are in sin, we destroy. And it's a whole other list of ways we destroy. Is that it on that? Go ahead. They were destroyed uh -huh. in many battles, very sore, and were led captives. Was what? And were led captives uh -huh. into a land that was not theirs. We was led away captive into a land that was not ours. What's that country called? What was that land? What did we get sent to on ships? Listen to this, brothers. Listen. They were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives, led away as slaves, into a land that was not theirs. This ain't our land. This ain't our country. This is not our home. Our home is Jerusalem. But we got to repent and keep the commandments of God and understand that we Israelites in order to be saved when Christ comes back. Right. That's right. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure the 
this truth gets out, please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.